Hello friends, this is Wendy and we are not doing a scrapbook today. We're gonna work on embellishments and this was in a scrapbook that I did, oh, years ago. And one of the things that my husband and my friend uh, Rachel both said was that I should go through some of my old scrapbooks and this isn't that old, but you know, go through some of my older scrapbooks and pick out some embellishments to use on new projects. Um, I am going to be working on a bulletin board. And so this, this is my inspiration for ephemera. I am a scrapbooker, I am a paper crafter, and I am an aspiring junk journaler. And I love all things Tim Holtz, so. And Disney, okay, you know, I do. And uh, anyway, let's get started. Just to start out, this is going to be my base, and it needs to be this direction for what I'm doing. I'm in my sunny sunroom. I'm not going to use this plate because this is open. Um, when they're open and loose like that, this plate going through, there are rollers in, in inside here, and the plate will cause uh, these dies that are just open and, and not very sturdy, they will uh, cause them to warp and bend. So, and I do know that from personal experience. So this is, let me see where I wanna do this. Sorry, I don't have that all in there. Okay, so this is, a um a colorize dye so we're starting with dark green first and then we're going to start with a little lighter green i cut this piece and it is from noted and i was because i'm going to be using stuff from noted a lot in my um junk journal. I wanted to see whether or not it is still available for purchase, and it is. I found it on Amazon, not under the word Tim Holtz, even though it is Tim Holtz, but under Sizzix. And I also found it on Etsy. So, I mean, that's just the first two that popped up. All right, I have everything cut out. And I'm gonna look at my inspiration here. I have a stamp and I found it. I had to look through my things, but I did find it. And uh, I was looking at the colors and I believe this is like fossilized amber. And I think this color here is vintage photo. I wanted this to be more of a green green, but guess what? I have, I have uh, inks so I can ink that up or I can smush and, and splatter. Okay, so I pulled out a bunch of colors and I think I'm gonna start with the pumpkins. Put the pumpkin together. So this is the base. And then this is gonna be the next one. And I think due to its color, I am going to use Vintage Photo on that. Inking the edges gives definition. I know I've said this before. I like the way it looks. I like the definition it gives. It just makes something that would be normally kind of plain into something that's a little more wow. So this one's the first one. I think I need to glue this down first. Um, I could have colored the edge of this. It's kind of a tiny little piece and I just kind of feel like I don't really need to ink the edge of this. First time I made these, there we go. I made them as uh, evil pumpkins for um, Nightmare Before Christmas. So not really evil, not really, but definitely a little more on the scary side. But this one I just want 
it to look like a pumpkin. I'll keep my my little cloths close by. I just barely cleaned off my glass, all the glue that was on it from before. But I guess, you know, that's one of those things. I mentioned in yesterday's video that, uh, or last week's video, I think this is going to be on Monday. Anyway, I just mentioned in a previous video that if you play with pins and needles, you're going to get your fingers pricked. And if you play with glue, you're going to get glue on your stuff, right? It's just part of part of the crafting process. Let's see, let me get that to go on just right. There we go. Okay, so that's step one. Here's step two. I don't know what color I want to put on this. That's step two. Maybe I'll do rusty hinge because this is the next kind of kind of brownish one. This was the wild honey one. Rusty hinge and wild honey are very close together, so I'm going to use those two together. I mean, on the same blending tool, blending foam. I did not throw the actual tool away. Oh, this is perfect. You may wonder, I don't even know how many colors Tim Holtz has. He used to have 60, and now he has more. Anyway, you may want to know how many I have. Well, in the... And the oxide, I'm not really sure. I have some. But in the Distress Ink, I have them all. Yes, I do. <laughs> but you know, you buy them one at a time. And I've already mentioned, they last a long time. I mean, really, a long time. Some last longer than others because you don't use them as much. And then some of these, like vintage photos, I have a re-inker, so you just put a drop or two of ink right back on it, and it's good as new. So, yeah, they last forever. Well, a long time. It's nothing lasts forever. Okay. So I'll glue this one down. So this one is now the second orange. So there are, oh, I can't remember how many pieces there were to this We'll count them later. But the base is one, and then the rest of that green uh, stem is two. And then this base of the actual pumpkin, then the orangey base is three. And this one we're putting down right now is four. And I might, let me see, because I might stamp. Ooh, to stamp or not to stamp, right? So that's always fun. Although, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stamp this one. And we're going to play just a teensy weensy bit. This is carved pumpkin. Okay. So this is oxide. Probably don't need to stamp this whole thing, but... I did. Well, I got some of it. Let's see. Make sure I got a good coverage here of the area that I'm going to. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Let's see what this does. Here's my little pressing tool. Okay. Never done this before. Well, I'm never, I'm a, I probably have never used that before. Does make a little mess down there. I will clean that up. Pull this off. Well, it's not a huge contrast, but maybe I didn't want a huge contrast, right? Maybe just a slight contrast was all I really wanted. So let's see. Yeah, you know what? That looks good, don't you think? I mean, pretending like you're right here in the room with me, right? 
I like that. That looks good. I think I will do the edges though, but I'm gonna do it in the carved pumpkin. Let me find my orange, here it is. In the distressed ink. Ah, sorry. I should say sorry to me because I just made a mess on my fingers. Okay. There we go. So yeah, that subtle was was good. And now I'm gonna go around it with the Distress ink and not the oxide. So, so this will be fun. The kids whose bulletin board I I maintain they um, they planted pumpkins back in May and then I think it was October this earlier this month or late last month, late September, early October. I'll have to check the dates. Then they harvested them. So I have all these pictures of the kids planting them from May and their teacher sent them to me. Uh, just after they harvested, she sent all the pictures. I'm like, okay, so when did they plant? And I'll find out when they harvested, but Thought that was a really cute idea, you know. So having them plant them and then harvest them. Okay, so we have the last one, which is this. And this one goes. Let me look at the picture. What did I do with that? Oh, it does go down here. And so let me show you this. From what he says in his videos he makes all these and he puts them on a background and he takes the pictures of them and then he sends them to Sizzix to do um you know as the cover and he's used a darker color here as the um outline so i think i will use a darker brown see if having a light bit of this is just right I'm not completely happy with this right here. So I think I'm going to, as I look at the picture, this one probably should have been put up higher or I don't know. I did something that wasn't quite what I should have done. And I'm hoping that this makes it darker. I, I think it's too close to the same color of that. I may go to um, vintage photo. So let's see what this does. See if this will make me a little happier. It does make me a little happier. I think I will blend that in a little more like that too. Okay. So again, I'm gonna take what I have on my ground espresso foam. So it's not gonna be a super dark color on here but it'll be a nice little edge to this because now that I've got that one with the darker on it I'm kind of upset I didn't do everything with it <laughs> it is a favorite isn't it what can I say okay pumpkin done so the next thing I'm going to do is use my ground espresso and put a definite edge on this to be a very clear and definite edge. Okay. And then I'm also gonna use my ground espresso and I'm going to stamp. sure this is also Tim Holtz. I've had this, oh gosh, it's got to be like 10 years. 
So I'm pretty sure it is. It might be one of those designs that he made um, special for Joann's or Michael's or something at one time. Uh, kind of a mini of something else that he had. This is my guess. But, uh, it is. I've had it a very long time. It's one of the first that I bought. One of my first Tim Holtz purchases. Well, I think I've been purchasing from him longer than 10 years, but... Something close to that. How's that? Okay, let's see how that did. Yay! It's perfect. Okie dokie. So I'm going to try a couple things before I do it on here. On here, This is a piece of paper, obviously, that was cut out of. I'm pretty sure I used fossilized amber because it's one of my favorites. Let me see. So this went crisscross. So I'll try the first one down here. See if it looks like it's the same color. Well, let's see. Let's see if it's the same color. I do believe it is. I just pushed a little harder or whatever. So that's that color. Now, whether I want to use Rusty Hinge or Vintage Photo. So let's, ah, how can that come out? But let's try this rust, Rusty Hinge. I'm pretty sure the one I had on my picture was um, vintage photo. Let's try this again with vintage photo then. You know, I now talk to myself even when I don't have the camera on. Okay, I probably always talk to myself even without the camera on, but I like really, I'll be going, and now I'm going to do this, and now I'm going to do that. And I don't even have the camera on. I mean, and I don't even, I was planning on not having the camera on. It was, it was like, the camera's not on. I'm just trying to figure out what I need to do. And <laughs> I'm still talking to myself. Yeah, definitely fossilized amber. So now let's try vintage photo. See which one I like better with the pumpkin. I thought I did this ahead of time because going with the grain kind of a thing is definitely working better with this particular stencil. I already know I like this better. Let's see it with the pumpkin. Oh, no, that's the winner. Okay. Now I've got one other thing I want to try. So I'm gonna try the same thing, but over here and see what I like better. Because sometimes you really wanna go with the more muted, the more kind of not sharp look. Wow, that's just going to take a lot of work. Maybe I do I just do the other. Let's see. Uh -huh. Might maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Now we'll try it with the rusty hinge. See how I feel about it. I 
Definitely have to tape everything down. Oh. I don't know. So this is what I did on my inspiration. And this, okay, let me go here. So this is with the brushes and see what a nice sharp image it makes. It's going to be a little extra work. It's going to mean I have to go, you know, to ink it a little longer. And it also means I need to do a lot more taping so that things don't move around. This is with the, just the foam. It's not as sharp. Oh, maybe I need to, okay. Let's, let's make this a little easier on me. Let's put them right next to one another and see how I feel. Okay, I'm okay with the foam. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. <laughs> oh, see, that's good to know. You got to know these things, right? So I only have to do this front. I don't want to do the back. And I do need to grab a little more tape. Here, let's get this all set up for the yellow. I'm also going to tape it to my glass mat. I have some tape just sitting right here. I've thought about this a lot and I've kind of played around with this so this is the background piece and I'm planning on inking the edges I did uh, cut out another one of these from the garden greens it's the same die as this one which that's kind of obvious I also thought it'd be fun to put it on here so there's that I found this in my stash. Uh, it's part of, it's kind of a thin cardstock, but it's cardstock printed on both sides. And I'm planning on inking around that, but I'm also planning on punching it with this. So it'll look like it was part of, like in a three ring binder or something and I ripped it out. Um, so I'm thinking about putting it back there. Last night when I was sort of playing around with things, my husband was, I took it out and he's like, why'd you take that off? I like it with the words behind there. So we're gonna keep the words behind there. I'm not sure if I'll punch, three hole punch it on this side or up there, but I'm gonna punch it somewhere and ink it. And then I also made one of these. So I gotta find my picky tool. There it is. And I read someone's comment on another you know, site about being able to poke through these little holes. And these little picky tools work really nice. But if she's got one with a ball on it, even, even the smallest of the balls does not go through. So you kind of need one that is sharp. But the suggestion that somebody gave her was to use a pin or a needle and that would work just fine. So if you don't want to go out and buy a picky tool, you can always use a pin or a needle. Anyway, this one, this is left over from um, the cover of my little golden book that I'm working on right now. And this piece of, it is uh, watercolor paper. I will mm, probably ink it a little darker than it is, but I like how it's variated in color. And so I think that'll be really nice. I was planning on putting it on the bottom, kind of like that. So I am going to zip through this.
Okay, I have some comments and notes, whatever. Um, this is by EK Success. I've had it a while, but uh, you should be able to find something like this out there in, in the world of, of stuff. <laughs> um, this is from Garden Greens. And I know I have seen this on Amazon, so it's probably still around. This is, stencil is THS095. It's actually a Christmas one. It's for like candy cane, you know, but it makes a great plaid. This was just from my stash. Both of these were just from papers I've, I've had in my stash. Um, I know I got both of those, though, on Amazon. Uh, this is from Skeleton Leaves. There it is right there. I thought it looked an awful lot like the pumpkin leaves. Pumpkin leaves are shaped like these vines, only they're huge. But I didn't have something like that, so I used these. Uh, this, I ended up liking the color, especially when I put it with a darker color there. That, that did it for me. Um, this is called gift card something. Um, and, and it is something that is still available because he's put it in his everyday collection. This was from Duo Pumpkin. This little pumpkin. And, oh, and this tag back here is from Noted. And like I said, I saw it on Amazon and on Etsy. So it's still around. It's still out there. And it's the one that's got these really cool little tags, the circle tags. And, oh, you're going to see me using them in my junk journal. That's for sure. This can go in your junk journal. This can be a card for somebody. You can even slip. Let me show you. You can slip a little something in there so you could get a little, whether it's a gift card or a little note or something. So uh, great for junk journals, great for... Um, a card, just put a back on it and write your little saying on it, and there you go. And we used Rustic Wilderness and Mowed Lawn, as well as my dear friend, Ground Espresso. Oh, and this, I'm going to, because I looked it up. It's from Mini Grunge. He also has a larger one that's just called Grunge. They're old, but they are from uh, Stampers Anonymous, which means they never are retired. So, oh. with that said, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. If you don't want to buy all of these Tim Holtz products, if you don't, you know, you could use stickers you could cut something out yourself you could get one of those printables and cut it out there are so many things that you can do in place of what i did this is just what i have and what i enjoy and you know you do you and by the way do me a favor and give me a thumbs up <laughs> um please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and hit that notification bell have a wonderful, wonderful pumpkin spice day. Bye.